Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Weigh In. The title of today's episode is Cheaters, Infidels, Countrymen, Chapter 2. Catching Feelings. <laughs> I love it. Your titles rock. Always good. So open this baby up, man. Okay, so basically we're going to start off with if you live under a rock or you just came back to planet Earth, the Jada Pinkett Smith, Will Smith, August Alcina entanglement love triangle however you want to um, however you want to um, label it however you want to it still it still gets you nervous under the collar when you see that man yeah yeah so here's here's a quick bio so Jada and August became friends four and a half years ago it started as a nurturing relationship that was ignited by his autoimmune disease so he has hepatitis of the liver which can uh, progress into cirrhosis of the liver yes. and be fatal. First off, how old was he at that time when she first met him? He's like 28, 29 now, so 25, 24. Okay, so he wasn't, I thought, for some reason I thought he was a teenager or something. No, he ain't no boy. Gotcha, She's gotcha, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Mrs. Smith is not a predator, you know, but, <laughs> you know, this is a grown man, and I want everybody to keep that in mind, you Sure, know? sure, sure, and she's so, a very grown woman. Yeah, so, and this is going from her Red Table talk. So Will and Jada hit a rough patch. She, she became entangled. Her words, not mine, you know. <laughs> entangled. <laughs> entangled, you know, in a relationship with August. That ended. It ended. Clearly ended. Will and Jada became a strong couple again. And this took place years ago, by the way. Yeah. Years ago. It was all wrapped up. You know, yeah. Covered up. You know. Yeah. But recently, August came out and exposed the situation on social media in an, inter in an interview with his close friend, Angela Yee, of The Breakfast Club. You know, so everybody's probably seen that that interview. So, fun fact, a couple weeks prior to this interview, he had an album coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Go do, do what you want with that information, you know. So, you know, 28, 29 year old R&B singer, songwriter, had three major projects, Life Under the Gun, uh, this thing called Life, and the just released product, State of Emergency, you know. So, my take on this situation is, and, and, and there are a few hot takes, so, there's speculation that the Smiths have an open relationship. There's speculation did Will Smith give his blessing for the affair, you know, and did Jada take advantage of August? Well, first off, you sound like you're an Entertainment Tonight reporter with that type of outlook there. Dude, I'm into all the tea, bro. <laughs> like, I'm into all the tea. I love the Smiths. The Smiths are black royalty. I'm into oh, it, yo. They, they really are. And, and it's it's, a, it's quite a strange thing. Uh, there's been rumors going around for a couple years at Will, and they both had, uh, uh, like, uh, swingers. They, there's been rumors of the yes. swinger thing for a couple years also, by the way. Yeah. So this, this is what I think. I think they do have an open relationship. I, do, I agree. But I also think that... The Smiths are a business. When you're at that level of celebrity, fame, financial status, you're a business. Sure. And a lot of people were like, no, it's real. At the Red Table Talk, Will was crying. Now, I tell people... I've well, been telling, he's an actor. He's one of the yes, best actors. All this is my man oh, right no, here. Dude, man. This is what I tell people. So, this Red Table Talk happened a week and a half after the reveal. There's sure. no way nobody came to him that he didn't see it correct, on social correct, media, that correct. they didn't talk that about it. That thing was rehearsed yeah. and written and scripted. Yes. Yeah, it looks somebody who gets it. <laughs> this dude is an actor. He can cry on command. That was just, that was posturing. Because here's the thing. If they're the Smiths, if their brand is a wholesome family brand, they have to present that to the world. Sure, sure. So if he, if he looks like he was okay with it, or he, it didn't bother him, that's not a look, good look for the brand. It doesn't show that they're human, they get nowhere with that. But if he's crying and she and, and she had the affair when they were split up, technically, it's all good. People make mistakes, Mwah. it's beautiful. But what I think is that this this young kid, you know, she was one, she was one of, she had a relationship with him and he wanted more. And, and, and once again, I don't know, I'm, I don't hang with the Smiths. I don't know anything. This is just speculation on my part, having fun. But what I think is the kid caught feelings. Like he, you know, he had a romantic relationship with Mrs. Smith and then he caught feelings and he couldn't take, you know, her not wanting to be with him no more. But look who her husband is. I think the guy knew exactly what he was doing. You talked about the CD release or his new record, new song. Whatever yes. That's part of it, too. That's definitely part of it, too. But, you know, uh, the thing is, 
and more power to him, right? I mean, he's yeah. Everybody, he like was the everybody, actual guy involved in this. Yeah, so everybody's got to get a buck, you know. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> But, yeah. but what I think is really revealing too is the fact that um, you know they did have a time they did have some time to put together the red table talk where they could really hash it out. Yeah. Now when that show actually plays out, what it does is um, this happens a lot of times where um, it allows to bring the emotions out, but it's more of a warmer kind of emotion. Yes. Yeah. Like they both felt a little off their game. They felt a little sad. They're a little in love. He said like we got this little phrase. He had the little phrase. He was talking to her like you know we're together through thick and thin. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it was, right? She yeah. looked clear. bad marriage for life. Yeah. Yeah. And play on the bad boys. Thing. I know. Yeah. But she clearly had a sad looking muggly look to her, like, you know, I know I did so, wrong, but I still do love you in the whole nine yards. Maybe she does. She probably does. I definitely think they love each other. But here's well, the thing. Well that was scripted and that they got banging hits on that show. Dude, Will Smith is one of the biggest actors in the world. Had 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 success in acting, had success in television, had success in music, and is beloved. Sorry, August, or should I call you Boston Tea Party since you're spilling all the tea? You never, <laughs> like, you just, that's a downgrade. Like, his one song, Welcome to Miami, is bigger than this dude's whole career. Like, yeah. you can't yeah, live yeah. up to this dude, okay? Like, yeah. it just, it won't happen. But, getting getting past that, going into actual catching feelings. So, catching feelings is having romantic feelings about a person who you've just met or have an express platonic relationship or a strictly physical relationship by consensual agreement. And just at some point early on wanting to have more. So with that being said, can you have casual sex without catching feelings? Do you think that you can just have sex robotically and just not develop emotions for someone? Well, I mean, uh, what do you think? It's a tough call because, well, first of all, you know, I don't do this type of thing. Mm -hmm. But secondly... But give um, me a world opinion, you know? I think you could catch feelings, but uh, they're not, they're not long-lasting. You think they're not going to last? You think it's just it's in like, the you know, moment? It's like a three or four day thing. Maybe you know the person. It could be an easy go. You know, it's like that kind of thing. So people catch feelings and then there's one-itis. And I get it because, you know, and I always tell people that emotions are the immediate feelings that want to have some kind of resolution. They're not logical. They, when you feel an emotion, that emotion wants to be expressed and resolved immediately. You know, so you don't get a chance to think about it. You just, I got, I got to get this feeling out. I got to do whatever I have to do. And I think people get caught up in the emotions. Like if you're touching, kissing, loving, sending notes, thinking about somebody all the time. You know, and especially if you're having, you know. Sex, you're, you're making married. Love, you know, <laughs> and you're making love to somebody. Like, I don't think that you can have sex. Like, in my personal life, I've you know, I've been with women where it's like we have both agreed on like we're just gonna have sex, and you know, we you know, we're both living busy lives and we get together, but after a while, and sometimes it's me and sometimes it's them, the feelings just creep in. Yeah, no, but you're I, having that intimate intercourse with somebody. You know, you meet somebody who's got a good personality. She's got a cute view here and there, and she's pretty and she's soft. She sounds nice. Um, you get that little, you get that fast crush. You really do. Um, oh, yeah. But you have to determine exactly if you can chill out on that because that could get to be problematic and stuff. But you do. I mean, it, that's what it's all about. We've been designed by the, the higher forces out there that made us as humans. Mm -hmm. um, everything that you're talking about is it happens because that's the way it's been planned and set up. You just gotta know when to like drop it and get out of it. Because if it goes too long, you run into you run into a bigger See, I problem. Just, I, but I think you could fall in a little bit of a. I mean, let's not put a, a a timer on love. If you want to be in love for five hours, it's fine. But you know, some people, if you're alive, for, but you are in love for five hours, it's going to carry longer. The, the and it's going to be problematic. The thing about love, love is an emotion, and emotions are not logical. You can't plan emotions. You can't plan love. You can't say, "Hey, well, you don't have to next plan. week. I'm going to be in love with that girl right there." You don't have to plan. It's happening live. That's no, 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 no. That's that's what I'm saying. Like you can't plan for it, so you can't yeah. predict it, so you can't really say or you know have a set point saying like, okay, this is this is all we're gonna do. I just personally think that emotions are always gonna creep in. They are, they are, and I'm not saying I, I'm with you. I believe yeah, okay. in the fact that it will. I mean, you, sometimes you know, but you'll say I love you, and you don't really mean it. You're in the moment. You feel that you're in love at that moment. It doesn't mean it's a lingering thing. It doesn't go over. You know, it doesn't go for two years or three years unless you're cheating with this girl forever. <laughs> so, so that brings me to my next question. We're only human. We're fallible, and uh, love is is what we're made up of. That, that's emotions are what we're about. Okay, so let me go to my next question. Can you maintain a relationship 
after that person expresses a desire to want more. So like, say you have the contract. We're going to bang every Monday, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, we gonna go back to the rest of our week. Then the person, you know, male or female, they say, yo, I want more. You know, I want walks in the park. I want picnic baskets. Well, no. A little more. Do you think that you can maintain a relationship, or do you have to cut it there? My well, personal some people thing, can try to pull it off. I don't know if it's going to work. You know, I would say it, it's probably going to be problematic inevitably, and it might be fun for a little while until it starts to get a little sour. Because if the girls fall falling head over heels over you, or vice versa, uh, that means they're going to creep into uh, the relationships you have or marriages either side, the male or the female. Yeah. And I think you just got to know when to say no. Because See, it's problematic and it's going to be a downfall at the end. Yeah, I definitely think that if you, like, you know, like I said, there's a lot of people besides myself, you know, out on this globe that do it to say, hey, I don't have time for a full relationship to give you everything, but I do need sex, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, and if you're cool with that, we can do that. And they set it up at the table like that. But then at some point, people want more. To me, as soon as the the person expresses the desire to want more you have to start pulling back. Cause they're just those feelings, feelings of the romantic feelings and the feelings of love never dissipate. They only get stronger, you know. And, and that's even, when it gets more problematic. Even if somebody pushes you away, that kind of makes it that it, it builds that tension where the person just wants. Because you want more. that quest. Yeah. Well, I think you just have to determine exactly what your situation is, and you can just see what you need to do, and hopefully, uh, strong the proper thoughts prevail. Absolutely. It's dangerous. It's, all, it's definitely dangerous. Now, so moving on. So, is it logical to want a relationship with someone who is married or has a boyfriend or girlfriend? Well, if you feel you need to have a little, like, a little bit of a conquest in you and you need to sort of like be better than the boyfriend she has, I mean, that means you got problems right off the bat. Because yeah. you sh at this age or whatever you're doing, unless you're teenagers, I guess it's different. Early it's 20s. not logical, people. It's, it's, it's insane. It's not logical. That means you're looking for trouble. You're stirring it up. You like to live a little dangerously in your relationships. Yeah. I don't know if that's really, that's not a true relationship. Because if the girl's falling for it, she's probably got an evil streak in her or the guy's got an evil streak. But, it's not good. But, but think about it from this level. This person may be married, have a sure. kid, have a dog, bills, you know, trips that are already planned. They can't just leave that established life for this little hidden rendezvous life that they have with you. Like, the sex is great, and the thrill of cheating is great, and, you know, but they leave that infidelity at the motel, hotel, holiday, well, and wherever it happens at. They're supposed to do that. You see, that's the key. That, that, is the, that is the key, but I just don't think that it's logical for somebody to get into those relationships. And once again, you're not thinking logical because you're thinking emotions. Yeah. So you're just leading with, I want to feel good right now. Like, you know, um, <laughs> like Holly Berry in that movie, make me feel good. Well, with Billy Bob? <laughs> with Billy Bob. <laughs> Well, if you, if you can't control Make those feel emotions, good. oh man, Academy Award role for her. Yes, kind of kind of interesting. But anyway, salute it, it, to Holly. <laughs> I love her. She's great. Yeah, go ahead. Don't She's so beautiful. Woman. Yes. Uh, I think um, if you're both going to play that game, you're both you're both not stable enough to realize you got to get out of it. I would say that that's going to be a recipe for disaster somewhere along the line. Nip it in the bud. Don't do it if you can control it. Solid advice. So, with that being said, how you let someone down who has feelings for you how you bring how do you bring the plan the plane down you know without the skids you <laughs> yeah, know smooth landing you know, man man or woman you know younger older you know how do you know how do you do, it, do you would you say a clean break or do you say to like kind of slowly or is it a case-by-case -case basis well, I mean, no matter what the person that you're dealing with is, um, be it male or the female, depends on how, who you are in the situation, I think uh, there has to be some hugging, there has to be some emotional, there might have to be a little tear or two. But you don't think that's, that's going to lead the person on, the physical contact, or do you cut? No, because what you're going to do, I would think, is if you want to like sort of cut the ice, is if you can get like her or he to cry a little bit and both realize that you know, I did like you, but I realize I can't do it, a little bit of that tough love kind of thing. Okay. And you got to be able to say like, you know, and it's just the way it has to be. Can we still be friends? And before you know it, they're happy. There's a little kissing, no tongue necessarily. And, uh, you know, another hug, and they and they go their own ways. Sometimes when the crying starts, it brings the emotional stuff out again. 
And all of a sudden, you got to have the go away fuck, right? You know, yeah, you which section. can lead to another one and another one. But you got to be able to bring the person down with some emotions, and she needs to bring you down with emotions. And there will be crying because you know it's like, you know I do love you, but we really can't make this work. I mean, this is talking from a sensible point of yeah, view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When two lovers are that hot, they're usually not that sensible. No, <laughs> uh, I would love say is that mine. is just a dangerous thing to be in. I'm glad I never been in it. <laughs> See, me, I think clean cut. You know, and I, I, I always advocate doing it in person, you know, taking that bullet and just saying, hey, I don't think this is going to work out. I really like you. I wish you the best in everything that you want to do. You're a beautiful human being. You're a beautiful creature. Stay in but touch. Go, but go, no, don't even stay in touch. But go live your life. I'm going to live <laughs> mine, you know. Well, that, I, Yeah, well, you're a stronger personality, so you can pull it off. Some people have a hard time doing it. Facts. But either way, you got to admit that it is, it's, it's probably the most complicated question you brought up today. <laughs> yeah. So my last thing is the power of entanglement. Jada's words, not mine. You know, an entanglement is a complicated or compromising relationship or a situation you know like it's so ingrained into our everyday lives because like with social media like we're so connected like can you escape the entanglement it's gonna be a, that's gonna be a buzzword for 2020 going on in 21 <laughs> we might do a whole episode on entanglements but i just i revere the power because i just feel we're so connected as a community as a species now with social media which we talk about a lot that you can't escape it your thoughts well uh people who have money like movie stars and that kind of thing they're able to pull that off because you know they have so much money they can get around it it's almost like they think they can do it there's a, hollywood people are breaking up left and right because there's no tomorrow because they're constantly excited about other things they see mm -hmm. they're hanging out with circles of people that are beautiful on male and female sides it's tempting there's lots of skin a lot of thighs mm -hmm. just you know beautiful everything uh whew, it's dangerous it's very dangerous I would say that um, there is a little bit of a power trip from being entangled, but that is probably the most complicated question you've brought up tonight. That is a recipe for disaster. You better hope you have a, um, uh, what do you call that? When you get married, you sign that little uh, green up. You better have a strong prenup up because it's going to be a problem. And um, Ladies and say, gentlemen, that was the way. And if you agree with everything we're saying or you don't agree or we missed something, leave it in the comments, man. And don't get your ass entangled. Yeah, avoid it. No sign it out. <laughs> nice episode. Very nice, sir. title of today's episode is Twitter, Life Under Scrutiny. So true, so true. Pretty heavy shipping going down with Twitter lately, man. I can't wait to hear some of the things you need to bring up, brother. Start off with some of the people who are so, some culprits. Yeah, so <laughs> not not culprits per se, but just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the big Twitter moments in the last few years, okay. more or less people, you know, and you'll kind of get a gist. Now, this is in no way an order of importance. Or relevance. Sure. This is just a list of people who are affected by Twitter. I'll bring it on us, man. George Floyd, Vanessa Gian, Ahmad Aubrey, Central Park Karen, all the Karens, Sawyer Hartley, James Gunn, Kevin Hart, everything 45th did or said, Kim Jong un, Megan the Stallion, Tory Lanes, the Cams, aka Citizens Against Masks, the police. The Tiger King, Nick Cannon, T.I., Doja Cat, 6 9 Elon Musk, COVID-19, Aliens, Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, everybody who ever wore blackface says something racially insensitive, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, or anything against pansexuals or they who identify as gender non-binary, white men, black men, <laughs> women, Kanye West, Kids, animals, the planet Earth, and last but not least, K-pop. Holy shit. Everyone who I just I forgot mentioned about some of that. in that little rant was affected or spotlighted or exposed by Twitter. Well, you know, it's amazing because there's always been this shit going on, right? Yeah. But Twitter, everybody thinks it's like they realize that you could get good publicity out of being an asshole sometimes. It could be career busters, but a lot of the people have been able to make money on this. And secondly, Kanye is not going to be 46. <laughs> so I'm glad he decided he's dropped out of that. Okay. So